Hello and welcome to our time together on this August day. The sun is out. There's a new wind coming into our wake as autumn is beginning to create a space to be welcomed um, with color and always new opportunities in a season, whatever they may be. We, we seek to not judge what happens, but to um, hold and know that in that holding, we don't hold it alone. We hold it with the holy. We hold it with each other. We hold it with all life. And even though we are traveling through a very complicated, painful, stress-filled time throughout our globe, uh, we recognize that there are pockets throughout the world, communities, individuals, nations, regions, who are, are seeking to find closeness and inclusivity and compassion and justice and recognizing that the trajectory we are on as a species is, is about being together in whatever we are experiencing and recognizing that in that experience there's an energy, a God energy, a holy energy that walks with us no matter what happens. And I hope that today we can um, dig into that a little bit and hopefully alleviate some fear or maybe perhaps bring out things that we need to address. Whatever happens, happens. The most uh, significant thing is to know that it happens in the place where you are with God. Always, always, always with God, with the Holy. We begin by acknowledging and honoring the land of our Indigenous brothers and sisters today, where we gather. And we are committing to be reconciled with all life and with our great Mother Earth that sustains us. Let us go into a breath prayer where we will use a word for breathing in and breathing out. I offer the word peaceful. Please use whatever you're comfortable with. We breathe in on the word peace. Hold for a moment, a second, and breathe out on the word full. Try and make your out breath longer than your in breath as you are cleansing out all the things that are in you that need to be given back into the world. So. Be as comfortable as you can, whatever that might mean for you. And we will do three good breaths and come back to each other. Close your eyes or soften your gaze, whatever works best for you. So we're going to breathe in on peace, breathe out on full. So peace, full. Peace. Peace. I'm going to read from Matthew this morning, or today, or this afternoon, depending on when you're actually watching this, seeing this. And it's chapter 16, verses a 13 to 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Some say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Abba in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on the rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Okay. 
everyone needs a burrow. The most significant burrow we all share is the one inside us, which is our sanctuary. And in that sanctuary, the eternal holy resides. The dimensionless holy resides. And it is our place of returning, living out from, and being in relationship with. We are here but for a moment, and then we move on in our soul's journey to somewhere else. Many of us have counted on and believed in and looked to um, masters and teachers throughout history or currently people that we know that have provided us with hope, with insight, with groundedness, which have opened us up, brought us healing, been there for us, pushed us when we needed to be pushed, allowed us to pull in when we needed to pull in. People like Jesus, um, people like Buddha, like Muhammad, like the Dalai Lama, like somebody that you love. It, it can be anyone that provides you with a sense of acceptance, an idea that our spirituality is deep and mysterious and yet it prevails and walks inside us and with us and is in all life and all livingness. There is no separation for any of us or anything within our global understanding. Some of these people have been historical, literary, prophetic, um, inspirational speakers, neighbors. When we allow ourselves to truly hear what Jesus is saying, I think it's very important that we understand that this passage is telling us something essential to who we are as a community of faith. That um, see Jesus as a teacher, a master, a guide, a brother, a friend, someone who has God experience, who, who knows God so intimately that it exudes out from him. He clearly, in this passage and throughout his sharings, wants us to know that we are of that as well. And he persistently looks for ways to to tell us that. And one way he's telling us that in this passage is that he wants Peter, along with the other disciples and their community, to continue his story, his journey, his offering of the great God within and without, and to share it. He asks Peter to build it. He's asking him to build it within and without. He's not asking him to create a new structure. We all have homes, most of us. We all have a burrow. We all have something that we call sanctuary, that we return to in some way. Um, aware that many people in, in, in transit who are transient and lost are seeking that and have only the within sanctuary, but many of us have a place that we hunker into and feel safe as much as possible. Primarily, though, that place is the sanctuary, the burrow within. And Jesus is reminding us that that is the primary place where we build relationship with God. It is not made of stone or mortar. It is not made of wood or steel or glass. It is not a place that we participate in on occasion or even on a regular basis in hopes that God will arrive or that we will find God there because God is here. And I would suggest too often our buildings separate us from that, whether they are church buildings or corporate buildings or educational buildings, they often do not provide a space that helps us, enables us, um, relieves us of our 
angst and brings about a sense of the holy. 2,000 years ago, Jesus was trying to tell us something, and we've missed the mark. We've created icons and statues and huge monolithic buildings to worship in that too often take up space and energy and do not provide us with spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening exists in the sanctuary within, whether you live in a sleeping bag or in a castle, in a small cabin or a two-story home, sanctuary is within. Jesus and his friends and his disciples went through the land trying to get this message across, trying to let everybody know is that it's not out there, folks. It's not constructed. It is not a structure, and you can't put God in any kind of a box and expect to understand, comprehend, live out what I am trying so desperately with all that I am to tell you. How do we change our partnerships? How do we um, reinvent who we are as a community of faith and repartner ourselves that doesn't prevent us from knowing God? How do we um, start to get rid of the, the things and the stuff and the buildings that too often get in the way too often get in the way and cause conflict and argument and take up resources that could be used to do so many incredible things, both for our own individual journeys and so many around us. I don't doubt that our intentions have been, have been mostly good and honorable, but our sight needs to change. Our vision needs to look towards a new way of being in relationship that, that doesn't um, require that we meet in a specific place in a specific time in order to know, hear, live out God's message of love, acceptance, inclusivity, and um, justice. I'm pretty sure that's not what Jesus was asking Peter to do. I want us to really think about that. And maybe it's time to make grand gestures of change that are scary and painful, but maybe there's so much more that we could be doing with, with who we are. Maybe we need to small group more, become a little more tribe-centered. Maybe we need to be in spaces where we can hear each other, where we're outside a little bit more, where we gather in restaurants or people's homes or just on a road trip where there's intimacy and honesty and just simple discussion and prayer and meditation and not in a place that too often has now prevented us from being authentic and instead created an expectation. Seek out those that See the world, the universe, all life as connected, as moving, as vibrant, as accepting and inclusive. Seek out those who recognize that this is only one moment and one time, and we are here to learn and to grow and to find the sanctuary within us. Seek out those who talk and write and read and whose presence you can feel just knows that love is central between and around and that love is holy and God and energy and however you want to define it. Seek that out as much as possible and be affirmed of who that is, what that is inside you, and then listen. Listen to what is being shared with you by the holy, still voice. Just listen and breathe. Hope when you can. Cry when you have to. Feel your anger. Feel your joy. And just know that this living, breathing God thing 
loves and honors you and holds you no matter what. Let us just take a moment to breathe, hold the world, hold ourselves, those we love, those that are struggling, every community on the planet, every animal life form, every plant, every bird, every ocean. Let us hold this with God. With God, we can hold everything. And let us see it resplendent, vibrant, alive, listening, inclusive, full of the wonder and possibility. And also the, the dramatic shifts, the struggling, the challenge, the pain, the dying, the grief, and not judge, just simply be with it. It may be juxtaposed, but it is the same for God. We are all the same. All that we experience is the same because we are simply held as what and who we are. Live in that place of non-dualism. Pray from that place. Don't be black or white or dualistic and find from that place of continuity, that place of coming together, your oneness with the great love that is here for all life. Amen.